Hey, my name is Dan Finkel. I'm the founder of Math for Love. I tweet at Math for Love. And I have a puzzle today that just came from Twitter, and I want to share it with you, and I want your help on it. So here it is. Uh, this comes from Lil Math Girl, who I just started following. Um, but I love this pattern that she put out. She said, basically, pick two numbers. She picks 12 and 2, and then you get the next one by adding the last two, and the next one by adding the last two, and you keep going until you get 10 numbers in the sequence, and then you take the seventh number in the sequence, you add those 10 up, you take the seventh number in the sequence, divide the sum of all 10 by the seventh, and it's always 11. Or to say it another way, if you take the seventh answer and multiply it times 11, you always get the sum of all 10 numbers. And that just seemed, it's, it's one of those things that seems so incredible, and it also seems like there must be something more going on here. Like, maybe that just happens to work, but that it always works? Where does the 11 come from? Why is it the seventh answer? Just seems like there's there's something to find here. So that's what I want your help with. Uh, I want to go over this in a little bit more detail. So again, Lil Math Girl takes 12 and 2 to start this out. I just use, you can use an Excel spreadsheet or a Pages spreadsheet, any kind of spreadsheet. And it's really nice because you can basically just let it do all the arithmetic for you. You can say, hey, I want this next entry to be the sum of the previous two and it will just do that for you. And then you can cut and paste that or autofill that in whatever way you have. And it'll just add up each cell so that each one, like that E38, is just the sum of the previous two, 320 plus 518. These sequences are kind of like Fibonacci sequences. Um, they're sometimes called Fibonacci-like sequences. So that's cool. Uh, we can continue this on a spreadsheet really easily as far as we want to go. Um, and then we can also go ahead and say, well, what's the sum of all the numbers up to that point? Uh, so at 12, we just have 12, but when we add 12 and 2 together, we get 14. At 12, 2, and 14, we get 28. 12, 2, 14, 16, we get 44, and so on. Uh, there's two ways to do this on the spreadsheet. One is to put in the sum and have it actually just say, okay, add up all those numbers to the left and up, uh, everything we've gotten so far in the sequence, just add those up. Um, and I was doing that for a while, but there's actually a really nice shortcut, which is to notice that since the last one always adds up all of the ones up until the last point in the sequence, all you need to do is add one more in, and that actually is way easier to cut and paste. So it's kind of nice actually even working in the spreadsheet really uh, incentivizes you to find shortcuts because it's really annoying when you have to really like fill in something new by hand instead of cutting and pasting it. So we've got this sequence, we've got the sums up to this point. There's a really interesting um, table just to look at. One thing I noticed, and maybe you noticed this too, is that the column on the right is not that different than the column on the left. Um, and in particular, if you look at those two entries, they're only two apart from each other. They have a difference of two. And actually, there's going to be a difference of two all the way up and down, kind of offset. Um, is that something just about this sequence, or is that true about sequences in general? That's something you're going to have to do other examples of to find out, but that's interesting to start with. Uh, but to go back to Lil Math Girl's claim, what she basically said was that if you go to the 10th number on the right, so that's the sum of the first 10 numbers in the sequence, it will be 11 times the seventh number in the sequence. Um, this is one of those times when it's kind of ungainly and awkward to say this all in English words, and math is really nice. If I call the ith term in the sequence x sub i and the ith in the summation sequence of the sums s sub i, then what she's saying is 11 times x sub 7, so the seventh term in that first column, is going to always equal uh, the tenth term in the second column. And what's really important about this is this works even if we change the 12 and the 2 to something else. And that's something that you can check, and I think you should check. So if you're checking this out, can you erase the 12 and the 2 and put in different numbers? Will that relationship still hold? 
one of the great things about doing this in uh, Excel or some other spreadsheet program is you can literally just erase the 12 and the 2 and put in, try out different numbers and everything else will auto-populate and you can see if those two uh, things will actually still match up like they're supposed to. What I'm wondering is, does this work anywhere else? The thing that I saw is that the fifth term in the sequence looks like it's exactly one quarter of the sixth term in the summation sequence. Um, so if you, yeah, if you were to multiply 30 times 4, you get 120. And again, is that always true or is that just special about this? Uh, those are both worth checking. And anytime someone makes a claim like that, or even a kind of wilder conjecture like I just made, it's worth checking. If those hold, the real question is, does this pattern somehow keep, does it keep going? Is there something we can multiply by certain entries on the left side of this, no matter what we start with, no matter whether it starts with 2 and 12 or with something else, and we will get some term on the right? Uh, I think it's a really interesting question. We were talking about it, and it seems to me like maybe there's more there, but... I think this would just be a great project to try out. So if anyone tries this, let me know. I'm at Math for Love on Twitter. You can hit me there, and I would love to hear what you figure out.